The desert southwest of America is made up of several states, but two which are within the core area are the two bordering states of Arizona and New Mexico. While both physically share quite a bit in common, both have had different trajectories with human geography. Let's compare both in the latest episode. Like other western states, Arizona and New Mexico are large physically, placing 7th and 6th respectively. Arizona has a rich history that dates back thousands of years to its original Native American inhabitants, including the Hohokam, Ancestral Pueblins, and Navajo. Spanish explorers first arrived in the 16th century, but it wasn't until the mid-19th century, following the Mexican-American War and the Gaston Purchase, that Arizona became part of the United States. It achieved statehood on February 14, 1912, as a 48th state. The development of the mining and cattle industries, along with the advent of railroads, spurred its growth in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. Arizona's arid climate and stunning landscapes, such as the Grand Canyon, have made the state a popular destination for tourism and retirement. New Mexico also has a diverse history that spans thousands of years, starting with its indigenous peoples including the Pueblo, Navajo, and Apache. Spanish explorers, led by Francisco Vasquez de Coronado, arrived in the 16th century, establishing Santa Fe as a key settlement in 1610. The region remained under Spanish and then Mexican control until it became a U.S. territory following the Mexican-American War in 1848. New Mexico played a significant role in the westward expansion and was a critical area during the Santa Fe Trail era. It gained statehood on January 6, 1912 as a 47 state. Known for its rich cultural heritage, blending Native American, Hispanic, and Anglo influences, New Mexico is renowned for its unique art, cuisine, and traditions, as well as its stunning natural landscapes like the Carlsbad Caverns and White Sands. In today's State Comparison Series episode, we are going to compare Arizona and New Mexico. The video will focus on the physical and human geographies of both states. In terms of physical geography, we will review three main factors, the geomorphology, meteorology, and ecology, while with human geography, we will review four main factors, the demography, urbanization, economy, and geopolitics. Before we begin, Make sure you subscribe to my channel, Our World, Our Planet, Our Home, if you enjoy learning about geography and earth science. Let's get started. Geomorphologically, Arizona and New Mexico share similarities, but there are some distinct differences. Arizona, being the seventh largest state in physical size, has a lot of landscape coverage, which changes. The western part of the state is part of the Colorado River Basin, making the elevations here significantly lower than other parts of the state. In fact, the lowest elevation of Arizona is 72 feet. Located in the extreme southwestern part of the state and on the banks of the Colorado River near the U.S.-Mexico border. That area is also only around 60 miles away from the Gulf of California, a marginal sea which connects to the Pacific Ocean. Further east and northeastward, Arizona's elevation starts to gradually increase, but cities such as Phoenix and Scottsdale aren't very high, only around 1 to 2,000 feet. The northern and eastern part of the state is where elevations start to dramatically increase to thousands of feet. For example, Flagstaff is at an elevation of 7,000 feet and Humphreys Peak, the highest in the state at 12,637 feet, is only 10 miles north of the city. Another geological marvel within Arizona is the Grand Canyon, a 277 mile steep sided canyon carved by the Colorado River. Heading to New Mexico, the state has a similar profile to Arizona, but with some exceptions. While the southern part of the state is lower, it's not as low as in elevation as Arizona, with the Red Bluff Reservoir being the lowest point at 2,842 feet. But further north, New Mexico's elevation substantially increases because of its location within the Rocky Mountains. All of the state's major cities such as Albuquerque are a mile or higher in elevation and over 80% of the state is 4,000 feet plus. The highest peak is Wheeler Peak in the northern part of the state near Colorado at an elevation of 13,167 feet. 
Overall, Arizona and New Mexico have interesting and unique landscapes, more so than say Ohio or Indiana. The meteorology of Arizona and New Mexico are climatically connected in that both are classified as Type B arid climates. However, characteristics such as elevation play a role. Overall, Arizona's somewhat sudden position makes the state warm to hot year-round. Phoenix's low elevation makes the city and the surrounding area experience very hot and sunny summers with temperatures frequently in the hundreds or highs between June and September. In the wintertime, the area stays delightfully mild with clear skies and temps in the 60s. Tucson, which is further south but more elevated, has similar meteorological conditions to Phoenix. However, further north, conditions do change. In Flagstaff, which is 7,000 feet in elevation, the city does experience all four seasons. Summers are warm and dry and never really that hot, while winters do feature copious amounts of snow, averaging over 90 inches. Sometimes, wildfires are a risk and can pose threats to human settlements. In addition, the state does see a monsoonal pattern develop in the late summer and early autumn, which brings rain, sometimes heavy, creating flash flooding. New Mexico is at the same latitude as Arizona, but much of the state is elevated, so climatic conditions are cooler. In the Albuquerque metropolitan area, meteorological conditions are temperate and all four seasons occur, but winters are not extremely cold with highs in the 40s, while summers are warm to hot with highs in the upper 80s and low 90s. Santa Fe, to the north and more elevated, sees colder winters with highs in the low 40s, while summers are pleasantly warm in the 80s. Carlsbad and Las Cruces, in southern New Mexico and lower in elevation, experience warmer temperatures year-round with mild winters and hot and dry summers. Because of the dry conditions, New Mexico is also susceptible to wildfires like Arizona. Ecologically, both Arizona and New Mexico have similar biomes in that they are both dry ecosystems. The state is home to the Sonoran Desert and the Mojave Desert, and both feature unique flora like the Segura cactus, Palo Verde trees, and creosote bushes. Fauna includes Gila monsters, desert tortoises, various species of rattlesnakes, the kit fox, roadrunners, and various lizards. In higher elevated areas, Forests do cover Arizona and include tree species such as the Ponderosa Pines, Douglas Fir, and Quaking Aspen. Fauna there includes elk, mule deer, and black bears. One negative is ecological decay as growth of cities such as Phoenix and Tucson have intruded on previously untouched lands. Like Arizona, New Mexico's ecology is rich and varied, shaped by its diverse landscapes ranging from desert basins to forests and mountains. The Chicoahuan Desert covers southern New Mexico and is characterized by plants like mesquite and agave. Wildlife includes the roadrunner, desert cottontail, and various species of lizards and snakes. At the higher elevations, forests host ponderosa pine, Douglas fir, and aspen. Wildlife includes elk, mule deer, and black bears. At the highest elevations, some areas are above the tree line and feature limited life forms. New Mexico has also grown in population, so growth from cities like Albuquerque and Santa Fe have led to some habitat loss and fragmentation. On the human geography, let's start off with demography. As mentioned before, Arizona and New Mexico have seen considerable population growth in the last half century. As of 2024, Arizona has a current population of 7,431,000 344 people, placing it 14th in population nationwide. Just 50 years ago, the state only had around 2 million residents. This growth has been associated with a mixture of physical and social factors, including a favorable climate, job opportunities, and a lower cost of living compared to other western states such as California. With this growth, Arizona is racially and ethnically diverse. Whites make up 56.3% of the population and the largest minority group are Hispanics at 30.7%, placing it fourth in percentage nationwide. Also, other minority groups such as Blacks, Native Americans, and Asians make up 5.5%, 4.9%, and 4.5% respectively. 
Arizona's ethnic makeup is a mixture, with English and Germans making up most Europeans and Mexicans the majority of Hispanics. Next door to the east, New Mexico has a current population of 2,117,522 residents, which has more than doubled in the last 50 years. But the state places 36 in population, significantly behind Arizona. New Mexico hasn't grown as much, mainly because of physical and social factors, including climate, isolation, and economic opportunities, which tend to lag behind Arizona's. Racially, New Mexico is one of the seven majority minority states, with Hispanics being the largest group at 47.7%, the highest of any state. Native Americans, Blacks, and Asians make up 10%, 2.1%, and 1.8% of the population, while whites make up 36.5%. Ethnically, the largest groups are Mexican at 16.3%, followed by Native Americans and Germans at 10.3%, and 9.8%. The Hispanic population is projected to increase in the next few decades. On to urbanization, Arizona and New Mexico have considerably different patterns of human settlement. The largest city and capital of Arizona is Phoenix, which has a city proper population of a little over 1.6 million, but a metropolitan area population of 4.8 million, nearly two thirds of the state population. Tucson is second in population with a city proper population of around 543,000 and a metro population of just over a million. All the cities placed after that with more than 100,000 residents are within the Phoenix metro area and part of Maricopa County, including Mesa, Scottsdale, and Tempe. Flagstaff places 15th with a population of around 77,000. In terms of transportation, Arizona is a very car-oriented state with multiple interstates, U.S. and state highways traversing the state. Major interstates within Arizona include I-10, a Southern Cross Country Highway linking California to Florida, I-40, another Cross Country Highway linking California to North Carolina, I-17, and I-8. Phoenix is home to Phoenix Sky Harbor International Airport, the 11th busiest airport in the world. New Mexico, having a smaller population, also has smaller cities. Albuquerque is the state's largest city with 558,000 residents and a metro area population of 960,000, nearly half of the state's population. In the south, Las Cruces is second with a population of around 102,000, followed by Rio Rancho, a suburb of Albuquerque. Santa Fe, the state's capital, is fourth, and rounding out the top five is Roswell, the site of an alleged UFO crash. Similarly to Arizona, New Mexico is car-orientated and has multiple highways traversing the state, including I-10, I-40 bisecting Albuquerque, and I-25, a mountainous interstate connecting Wyoming to southern New Mexico. The economies of western states have been growing in recent years, and Arizona and New Mexico are no exceptions. However, there are some major differences between the two. Arizona has a state GDP of $508 billion and a per capita income of around $69,000 a year, just above the U.S. average. Arizona's economy is diverse and multifaceted, driven by various sectors. The state has seen a significant growth in tech startups and established technology companies. Tourism is a major contributor to Arizona's economy with attractions such as the Grand Canyon, Sedona, and numerous national parks drawing millions of visitors annually. Arizona's agricultural sector is known for producing cotton, lettuce, and other vegetables. The state's climate allows for year-round farming in many areas. In addition, cattle ranching and dairy farming are also important components to the agricultural sector. Companies headquartered in Arizona include Honeywell Aerospace, a subsidiary of Honeywell International focusing on aerospace products and services, Banner Health, a nonprofit health system operating hospitals and specialized facilities, PetSmart, a leading pet supply and services retailer, and Microchip Technology Incorporated, a company specializing in microcontrollers, mixed signal, analog, and flash IP solutions. New Mexico has a state GDP of around $106 billion and a per capita income of $50,000 a year, 48th in the nation ahead of just West Virginia and Mississippi. The reasons for this include many New Mexicans working lower wage jobs, 
higher levels of poverty, and a lack of suitable educational assets. Despite this, the state still has a diverse economy. New Mexico is a leading producer of oil and natural gas, particularly from the Permian Basin. The energy sector is a significant driver of the state's economy. Also, the state has substantial potential for renewable energy, particularly solar and wind power, and is investing in these areas to diversify its energy portfolio. Tourism is a major industry in New Mexico, driven by attractions such as Carlsbad Caverns, White Sands National Park, and the cultural heritage of Santa Fe and Taos. In recent years, New Mexico has become a significant location for film and television production due to its diverse landscapes, favorable tax incentives, and established infrastructure. Albuquerque and Santa Fe are central hubs for this industry. Companies headquartered in New Mexico include Molina Healthcare, a provider of government-funded care for low-income individuals primarily through Medicaid, Aspen Avionics, a company specializing in manufacturing avionics for general aviation aircraft, Los Alamos National Bank, a community bank offering personal and business banking services primarily in northern New Mexico, and a Santa Fe New Mexican, the oldest newspaper in New Mexico, providing news coverage for Santa Fe and its surrounding areas. Geopolitically, Arizona and New Mexico are the two newest continental U.S. states, being admitted into the Union in 1912. In the last century, both states have changed politically and aligned differently with ideologies. The first presidential election Arizona voted in was a 1912 election when the state gave its electoral votes to winning Democratic candidate Woodrow Wilson, and then again in 1916. Then from the late 1910s all the way to the early 1960s, the state switched back and forth between Republican and Democratic candidates. One outlier from other states was a 1964 election when Arizona gave its electoral votes to losing Republican candidate and Arizona native Barry Goldwater. However, this led to Republican presidential candidates winning the state until it was broken in 1996 when Democrat winner President Bill Clinton won the state. Since that election, Arizona has been seen as a swing state because of the relatively close presidential elections during the 2000s and 2010s. President Joe Biden did win Arizona in 2020, but current projections for 2024 show former president and Republican nominee Donald Trump in the lead in polling. In the U.S. Senate, Arizona has one Democratic senator, Mark Kelly, and a former Democratic senator turned independent, Kirsten Sinema. And in the House of Representatives, six Republicans and three Democrats. On the state level, the governor is Democrat Katie Hobbs, who was elected in 2022. Like Arizona, New Mexico's first presidential election was in 1912, when the state gave its electoral votes to winning Democratic candidate Woodrow Wilson, and again in 1916. The state followed a parallel trajectory to Arizona from the late 1910s through the later half of the 20th century by going back and forth between Republican and Democratic candidates. Then in 1992, New Mexico gave its electoral votes to winning Democratic candidate Bill Clinton. This election started the state's trend on becoming a safe blue state. But President George W. Bush did win the state in 2004 by less than 1%. President Joe Biden did win the state in the 2020 election, and for 2024, he is likely to win again. However, polling shows that the race may be a bit closer. In the U.S. Senate, New Mexico has two Democratic senators, Martin Heinrich and Ben Ray Lujan, and in the House of Representatives, all three are Democrats. On the state level, the governor is Democrat Michelle Lujan Grisham, who was elected in 2018 and re-elected in 2022. The Desert Southwest is one of the most attractive and scenic parts of the United States, and Arizona and New Mexico give this region a boost to that. Socially, both states are different, especially economically and politically, which has given them both unique identities. And throughout the 21st century, both will continue to evolve and change. That concludes this week's episode. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to leave your feedback on this video, please do so in the comment section below. And remember, if you enjoy geography and earth science, you found the right channel. So be sure to subscribe to my channel, Our World, Our Planet, Our Home. Until next time.